Hello, everybody, wherever you may be, from coast to coast and sea to shining sea, welcome to the World's Radio Show and Radio Live. Thank you so much for coming today. It's the 12th of July, 2021. I'd like to welcome you from around the world to Ham Radio Live, where our mission is to help people get into amateur radio. And, you know, a lot of fun, too. Hope you guys have a good day today. I hope we enjoy each other's company, and I hope you have had a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Hi, everybody. From around the world, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. My call sign is Kilo 7 Hotel November. The whole point of doing the show is to help people get into amateur radio, get their license, and make calls around the world and make some great friends in the process. If you'd like to get into amateur radio, there's many ways. All you need to do is just get a hold of one of these radio societies and let them know where you're at. That's it. They will then hook you up with a radio club that's near you. First of all, the American Radio Relay League, we're going to have a little extra history on them today, sent by the ARL to me that I hope you'll enjoy. Some very special historic pictures that not many people have seen. ARL, great place to help you get licensed and on the air. Find them online at www.arl.org. If you're in Great Britain, our mates in the Great Britain are so good at the RSGB. Find them online. There are some really strong people there. Find them at www.rsgb.org. That's www.rsgb.org. If you're over in Canada, the Radio Amateurs of Canada can help you out. Find them online at www.rac.ca. And in Japan, the Japan Amateur Radio League is available. Hit the contact us bar, let them know where you're at, and they'll help you find a radio club near you to help you study for your license and get on the air, just like the rest of these groups will do as well. They're, lo- they're found on the internet at www.jarl.org. Finally, for our mates down under, we won't forget you mates. My, you're, you're my buddies. Are you kidding? How could I forget you guys? The Wireless Institute of Australia can be found at www.wia.org. If you'd like to email the show like those folks did, <laughs> you can do so at CQ Ham Radio Live at gmail.com. And if you'd like to help support the channel, keep the channel on the air, keep us going and help us to continue to encourage people to get here in the amateur radio, please do so. Send a donation if you can via PayPal to CQ Ham Radio Live at gmail.com. Or we're also on Patreon. Find me there at Ham Radio Live. Pretty darn simple. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Going to see a blackout, and there we are again. Sorry about that. First of all, John Stevens, welcome to the channel. Whiskey Bravo 4, Hotel Zulu Alpha. John, it's an honor to meet you. Thank you for coming to today's show. Thanks for being here, John. Privilege for sure. Whew, tongue-tied. I guess it's Monday. Hi, William. Kilo 8 Golf India Mike. Home of butter burgers and concrete shakes and all the good stuff at Culver's. Welcome to the channel. It's so good to see you today. It really is. And Martin, my buddy in Holland, it's great to see you as well. Working the night shift, I'm sure. He's a hardworking guy. And he finds time to watch a show during his work hours. Away from the boss, I hope. Papa Echo 9 Tango India Golf. It's great to have you here, Martin. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. JJ, Victor Echo 3, Whiskey, Whiskey, Juliet. Woo! It's that time again. Hi, Larry and all. And there's some applause. Hey, thanks, JJ. John, that's a nice comment. How's Miley? I'll I'll show you. There she is. She's up here with me. There she is right there. See her behind me? Right there. Right there. She's resting right now. So she kept yours truly up until about 3 o'clock this morning. I... I, I, you know, I was at the point where I was like, okay, look, I love you very much, but I, I'm about to destroy you. So I need to get some sleep. And the poor thing, she just had a really rough night. It was a time we took, we took about a few hours off to get, you know, a few hours off, I should say, to go to the beach, to take it easy and just get a break from everything. Because it's been going like nonstop for nine days and no sleep and just all this care. And I think it just freaked her out. She just thought she was left alone forever because we all three went. And left her home alone, and she just, wow, she just didn't do well with that. So she's very glad to have Dad back. So that's the first time she's actually been in the studio during the show. Yeah, that gives you an idea. So, John, thank you. That's very kind. Whiskey Bravo 4, Hotel Zulu Alpha. I appreciate you asking. Thank you. Tom, my goodness, it's late as heck. 
ah, didn't want to do the show this late, but you know, it's the only way I could get it on today. And I know it's like the middle of the night where you are. But look at this. He's like all the way in Bahrain. Alpha Echo One, Tango Papa, his Bahrain call sign, Alpha 92 Golf Whiskey. Tom, it is truly a blessing and an honor to have you here. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Wow. It's really late. Thanks, man. It's good to see you too, Tom. It really is. Folks, we have a pretty cool show today for you. If you like the AA, sorry, the IARU championships, it's a really cool show. I'm going to talk to you about the different bands. We're going to talk about looking at QRZ. You know, at the top, when you look at QRZ and you see the conditions. To not, it's not that that's bad. Okay, I don't want to put QRZ down. It's just like the forecast I'm going to give you. It's a forecast. It's not the fact. It's just the forecast. So use your ears. Take time to maybe listen to an SDR that's near you on the web or turn your radio on and listen. You may find that the bands that QRZ says are fair are actually the best bands. We're going to go through that today, and I hope you enjoy it. Cliff Bolts is here as well. Whiskey Delta 4, Oscar Bravo, Papa. Always a pleasure to see you, Cliff. Let's get in the news. First of all, there was a second email that the ARRL sent out to their lifetime members, all right? Now, they sent the first one out on June 16th. There's going to be another one, okay? So if you're a lifetime member of the American Radio Relay League, they're just trying to find out about verification of your address. There's This is totally not a scam. It is legit. All right. You can either contact them at 860-594-0200 or email the ARRL membership group there at membership at ARRL.org. They'll help you. It's just to basically make sure the books are right. So please make sure if you're a life member of the American Radio Relay League that you fill out that form and send it in. Okay. RSGB News, the National Radio Center, look, it opens up after the grounds work is all done. This is at Bletchley Park, a place, by the way, that if you go to visit Great Britain, this is a must see. This is such a historic place. The history behind Bletchley Park goes way back. And I mean, way, way back. It is. It has got to be on your on your trip itinerary. Okay, they had a tree falling adjacent to the RSGB National Radio Center there at Bletchley Park. That work was completed successfully, and it reopened last Thursday as planned. Now, it's open every day except for Wednesday to pre-booked Bletchley Park visitors. A definite must on your UK visit. That is such a historic place. Wow. RSGB convention goes online for 2021. They tried to meet face-to-face again this year, but the, you know, the COVID issue just is too much. So this major indoor event they have planned takes many months to plan. And due to continuing COVID-19 uncertainty, the Radio Society of Great Britain has to make a, you know, little bit of a change. So they're putting together another program of excellent presentations across two streams. Okay, so this is not going to be like a virtual event where like, like you know, like Frederick Schaffen was this year where you kind of go through the fairgrounds and, you know, see stuff. No, it's going to be in two streams. Please, the RSGB has a really good YouTube channel. Just go there and connect and hit the bell icon so you can be reminded when these come on because this is going to be really good stuff. It's going to provide information and inspiration no matter how long. You've been a radio amateur. Find out more information there in Radcom, GB2RS News, and online in the coming weeks. But please plan for this in October. It's worth it. The Youth on the Air Contest, second leg, comes up on the 18th. Okay, it's going to be from 1000. So 10 o'clock in the morning. Can't we just say that? 10 Zulu to 2159 UTC. It The first leg, more than 100 entries were from contesters between 7 and 25 years old. How about that? If you'd like more information and you're a young person, you'd like to take part in this. People like, I'm thinking of people like, um, you know, Ishmael and Dominica. Yeah, this could be for you. Full details can be found on the Youth on the Air website should be pretty cool all right we got a trivia question for you today this is a tough one don't think this is easy and it's not d all right question what was the first type of radio detector used (laughs) 
<laughs> now this this might be a little different. What was the first type of radio detector used? Excuse me, was it A, regenerative, B, superheterodyne, C, coher, or D, galena crystal? All right, give you this again. What was the first type of radio detector used? Was it A, regenerative, B, superheterodyne, C, coher, or D, galena crystal? A, B, C, or D? Hit me up with your answer and we'll... Uh, let you know what the heck is going on here. By the way, nice little comment here. I wanted to get on the screen. Kent, my buddy. How are you, Kent? He says, hi, Larry. Glad to hear from you again. I hope you had a little rest. We're working on it as much as we can. His call signing. Kent, thanks for coming today. Kilo Alpha for Fox India X-Ray. Sorry about that. Had a little noise behind me, and there we go. Good to see you, Kent. Nice to see you, buddy. All right, so we got Jim's Well from Walnut Creek, California. Whiskey 6, Juliet, India, Mike. Welcome to the channel from Walnut Creek. John Stevens, Whiskey Bravo 4, Hotel Zulu Alpha. His answer is C. He believes it's the co -herer. And my friend, you are correct. You got that one 100% right. <laughs> and the crowd is screaming for you, sir. It is a co -herer. Congratulations. You are uh, the, what is it? So North American now with, uh, with nine, excuse me, what is it? Uh, Sorry, eight, and then no, it's nine, seven. Excuse me, nine for North America and seven for Europe. That's what it is. Here's what a coher looked like. Here's a few, you know, cohers from the past. These are actual radio detectors. So these actually, you know, help to pick up radio frequencies. Look at these. These are all cohers. Isn't that something? These are all antiques, believe it or not. And these were the very first radio detectors. Yeah, coher. It's a primitive form of radio signal detector. Is using the first radio receivers during the wireless telegraphy era, uh, era at the beginning of the 20th century. So this goes way back, a little bit after Guillermo Marconi invented wireless. Okay, so this is kind of how it all started. In its use of radio, it was based on the 1890 findings of French physicist Edouard Bromley, and adapted by other physicists and inventors over the next 10 years. The device consists of a tube or capsule containing two electrodes spaced a small distance apart with loose material with loose metal fittings in the space between. So, a couple of electrodes with a couple of loose metal fittings between them. When a radio frequency signal was applied to the device, the metal particles would cling together or cohere reducing the initial high resistance of the device, thereby allowing a much greater direct current to flow through it. In a receiver, the current would activate a bell or a Morse paper tape recorder to make a record of the received signal. Think of it like the, the first CW reader, right? <laughs> it, it worked that way. The metal filings in the core remained remained conductive after the signal pulse ended so that the coher had to be decohered by tapping it with a clapper attacks activated by an electromagnet each time a signal was received. Oh my goodness. But that's it. That's the core. They remained in widespread use until about 1907 when they were replaced by more sensitive electrolytic and crystal detectors. The original coher, the original way that we picked up radio back in the day. Well done on that. I'm fantastic. That's really cool. Congratulations to you, John, getting it right. Because that, I thought, would throw people a coher, the very first radio detector. There you go. All right, let's look at the conditions right now out there for ham and shortwave propagation. We've got a very anemic SFI. Look at that. 71. Oh, my gosh. Solar numbers, only 23. A index of four, a K of two. All right. And right now it shows 80 and 40 and, you know, 30 and 20 available, right? Geomag is quiet at a K2. It becomes very quiet at K1 and K0. 
We'll take a look at all of that, let you know what it looks like around the world. Coronal holes, look at 76. Pretty big, but it's not causing any trouble to us right now. A1A, not too many bright spots. That's why we've got such a low solar number. K index has been pretty steady, really, since the 11th. Look at that. It's been pretty steady at K1. Then a couple of spikes to K2. That's why we've got, instead of very quiet conditions, why the forecast says just quiet okay this kdn k index has an impact on the aurora here's the aurora borealis you can see it's pretty heavy over siberia and maybe the northern part of scandinavia but then it kind of gets real short real narrow and weak over the top of north america so the northern part aurora australia's looks like this today it's totally unworkable that's what we have for your aurora forecast sorry folks on the mufs which are back thankfully alaska with a 16.28 boulder pretty close right there with them at 16.76 ascension island at 14.64 athens greece right up top 21.19 Darwin, Australia at 9.78, and Hermanus in South Australia, sorry, South Africa, well, wow, hello, South Africa, thank you, <laughs> and tie the tongue, 6.23, sorry about that, kind of one of those, I guess I'm a Monday person here. On the current noise floors around the world, starting from Hawaii in the far left, S3 on 40, S2 on 20, S3s throughout North America right now, we've got an S3 and uh, an S3 on 40, both in Brazil and Argentina. So they're steady at S3 on 40. 20 meters, however, out of Sao Paulo this morning, S2 out of Buenos Aires, Argentina, 20 meters, S1. We've got threes all through Europe, between the UK and Germany, except for a 20 meter S2 in in Hamburg this morning. So S3 is all over Europe. And then we go farther east to Russia, S4 on 40, S2 on 20. India this morning, S2 on 40 and S1 on 20. In Japan, we got a pair of threes, 40 meters, S3, 20 S3. S3 down in Melbourne this morning with an S2 on 20 meters. So 40 was S3, 20 S2. Finally, over in New Zealand, S3 on 40, S1 on 20 meters. Your ham and shortwave forecast today looks like daytime for ham radios. You're going to have 30, 20, and 17. That's going to just be for voice. Okay. Just there's not enough SFI to get you further up. Okay. We're not going to get 15, 12, or 10. However, data will work in those places. It will. You'll get data from 30 to 2. E skip voice and data on 6, 4, and 2 should be possible today. Nighttime ham openings 160, 80, 75, 60, 40, 30. And I believe 75, even maybe better chance of 20 meters open tonight until just after midnight your time. Shortwave bands today 31, 25, 22, and 19 meters. Your shortwave nighttime 120, 90, 75, 60, 49, 41, 31, 25, 22, and 19 meters until just past midnight. Most of the short wave you should hear in North America will be on the 49 and 60 meter band as well as 75 meters. But don't give up on 19. 19 can sound absolutely brilliant. Welcome to the show, everybody. A very happy July the 12th to everybody. JJ, I think Delated Crystal is in the high, high I dated Delated Crystal in high school. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. My brother, courtesy of Wi-Fi downstairs, Bob, a very happy Monday to you. Greg, welcome. Howdy to you from Kilo Alpha 7, Mike Delta Mike. Greg, it truly is an honor to have you on today's show. Thank you for coming. Wow, what a treat. I think that's the first time, right? I think that's your first time here. Kilo Alpha 7, Mike Delta Mike. Thank you for being here. All right. And Kent, Kilo Alpha 4 FIX, the last thing is probably just as fast as my CW. <laughs> that's great. Canadian Maker Project, hello to you. We have some really neat stuff to share. These are historic photos from the ARL from back in the day. Now, we talked on Friday about the history of the American Radio Relay League as well as WNAW. 
It wasn't always that way. Remember, it started as 1MK back in the day. This was way back when Hiram Percy Maxim first started the American Radio Relay League. Yeah, the Federal Radio Commission gave them 1MK as their first call sign. Then as time went on, things changed. They became W1MK. Now, this was during Hiram Percy Maxim's lifetime. Okay, So then, all of a sudden, they had a problem. The flood happened there in in uh, in uh, Connecticut, right where they were in Hartford, and it flooded everything out, including the radio station W one A W. They bailed everything they could out of the building before things got really bad, and literally brought them to headquarters, which was downtown on Main Street in Hartford. So they put together as fast as they could a radio station to keep getting out to the American public. This was way back in 1936. The good thing, they'd already purchased another building. They had, like, from some property, had a house on it, but it was around seven and a quarter acres, enough land to put some antennas up, build a building, and have a really good good radio station with W1AW. But it wasn't W1AW yet. At that point, they used a temporary call sign. Call sign when they were in the flood between, you know, pulling all the equipment they could out of the flooded radio building at W1AW back in 36 to their headquarters on Main Street in Hartford was literally for two years W1INF. So the main ARRL station was W1INF from 1936 until 1938 when the new building opened up. By that point, unfortunately, Hiram Percy and Maxim had passed away. The trustees of the American Radio Relay League asked if they could please use his call sign in memoriam at W1AW at the ARRL radio station. It took a year, but the Federal Radio Commission at that point was changed to the FCC, and they granted the request. Let's take a look at a few pictures from back then. Here's Robert Parmenter. He was the very first paid operator at W1AW. Look at look at the call sign. W1MK. You see, this was from way before the flood. This is A25 of 1932. This is Robert Parmenter, the very first person to run the American Radio Relay League's station, W1MK. Thank you to not only the American Radio Relay League and Michelle for sending me the photos, but also the W1AW Historical Archives. This is pretty special. Here's Hal Bubb. Hal did the most of the heavy lifting. You have to understand, when Parmenter left, Hal Bubb kind of came in and he had the responsibility of building transmitters and receivers, because remember, they weren't transceivers at that point. They were separate entities. He was building transmitters. He was getting them all together. Then the flood came, and they had to start over again with new antennas, new equipment, everything. This man in the background, the one that's standing, that's Hal Bub. He was the first guy that really stepped up and got the American Radio Relay League and W1AW through probably the most difficult part of their history. Literally. It was, he was there for the flood. He was there to try and get equipment out. He was there to put up the portable station that would become W1 INF. And he was there when W1 AW came into the new building in 1938. Here's another photo. Now this is him working. Notice there's a receiver there and there's a transmitter there. Two pieces. Pretty special. Thank you again to the American Radio Relay League for sending me this. This is beautiful stuff. Here's another one. There are the transmitters. Now, remember, back in the day, transmitters were specialized for each frequency. So these are for each band, literally. That's what it's for. You've got one guy working the keyer. You could use phone. You couldn't on 40 meters yet, but you could use phone on, say, 160 and 80. That was okay. You could do it on 20. 40 wasn't available until 1951. So 
That's what it looked like back in the day. And that's how Bub doing the work. Here's Bob Parmenter. This is a great picture of, no, excuse me. This is how Bub, look at that. With, look at the heat kit. He's working right there. And there's W1AW, the call sign right on the right. Look at these beautiful vintage photos. I, I really want to thank Michelle from W1AW and the American Radio Relay League for really sending us some absolutely priceless photos. Michelle, thank you. Thank you very much for what you did. All right, let's take a look at something from this weekend. It's kind of cool. It really is. By the way, I didn't forget you, John. It's good to see you. Victor Echo 5, Juliet Hotel, November. Welcome from some Scat from Saskatchewan. It's good to see you, John. Thanks for coming. Happy Monday. All right. This weekend we had the IARU Championships. If you turned it on your ham radio or your short wave, you heard it. Believe me, whatever frequency you're on, you would have heard people calling contest. But it was pretty interesting. Come Saturday night, that's the peak, really, of the contest. Because that's when a lot of folks are really trying to work North America. Now, let's take a quick look first at QRZ. This is what it looked like that night. If you were to just go on a QRZ and say, I think I'm going to work a band tonight, but I don't know which one. Oh, look, 40 and 80 look great at night. That's not really what happened. It wasn't even close to what happened. Here's the IARU map. This is how people would, you know, designate what number they were. It depends on what zone you're in, okay? So the U.S. has 6, 7, 8, 10, all right? So that's pretty much the U.S. But, I'm sorry, Mexico is 10, pardon me. But that's pretty much the way it works. Canada has 2, 3, 4, and I believe 5, and then Alaska's 1. So wherever you were, you could do that. You could just give your, you know, your map, your number from whatever district you're from. Or if you were from the U.S. and you were part of the American Radio Relay League, your exchange would be ARRL. That's how it worked. But I want to show you something very interesting. By the way, from Great Britain, always good to see you, Eddie. Thank you for being here. Golf Whiskey 6, Bravo X-Ray Uniform. My goodness, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming here, my friend. Eddie... You make the show better every time you're here. Thank you. All right, let's take a look at this. Now, we saw the QRZ page. This was from Saturday night. All right, and I mean Saturday night here in the U.S. Let's take a look. So in this case, most people would say, wow, 80 and 40 would be great. Okay, let's look at what 80 actually looked like that night. Look at this. Look at all the noise on 80. And you see very few frequencies because it's just so much noise. This is typical for summer. Okay, this is not anything bad, but you're really going to have a hard time working DX here. You really are. Here's 40. Take a listen. This is exactly from the contest that night. Listen carefully to the call signs. Thank you. Who is out on number three? Akir Zed. W6 Alpha Florida Alpha Contest. Thank you. I'm going to apologize because I'm tuning with my thumb here, okay? This is from a web SDR. Thank you, God, Jeff. November X-ray 6 Tango. November X-ray 6 Tango. All right, so there's 40. 
And you didn't hear a single DX call, did you? If you were to look at QRZ that night, you would say, well, 8040 is good at night. But that's not where everything was. Wait till you see this. I think you'll like this. Let's take a look at 20 meters on Saturday evening. Now, this would have been at 10 p.m. Pacific time. I want you to see if you can count how many countries there are. I already have. I'll let you know at the end of this, all right? It's going to be about 10 minutes because there were so many stations on the air. Now, 20 at this point, if you take a look at QRZ, is fair. Well, let's take a look and see if it really was fair. See if you can count the countries. Here's Australia to start. Risky nine radio echo. Risky nine radio echo. Roger five nine eight. Okay, Echo Wow Five. Radio Sugar, thank you. Five nine uh, eight. Contest. <laughs> Okay. Kilo Julius seven. Uh duplicate. We worked at uh oh four oh six. Thank you. CQ contest, CQ contest. Norway, United, one, Alpha Whiskey, portable box. Uh, it's a little bit of QSB. Victor Alpha 3, Delta, Golf Alpha. I'm Nine, Sierra Radio Alpha Lima, Sierra Radio Alpha Lima, over. Echo Eight, Hotel India Fox Shot. Victor Alpha Three, Delta Germany Alpha, is that call correct? Uh, Sierra Echo Eight, Hotel India Fox Shot. Victor Alpha Three, Delta Golf Alpha, you are five nine Sierra Radio Alpha Lima, Sierra Radio Alpha Lima. Alpha Lima, over. Roger, Roger. <laughs> Kilo 7 Hotel, Kilo 7 Hotel. Kilo 7 again. Seven Hotel Kilo Radio, five nine Papa Zulu Kilo. 
Thank you. Sugar November Zero Hotel Queen. I cut it a little short because it goes so long. Let me tell you the countries that are on that 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 audio clip because it'll blow your mind. And if you look at QRZ, and there's nothing wrong with QRZ. Again, it's a forecast. It's not the real thing. It's why you should turn your ham radio on and listen for yourself or find a web SDR that you can listen on your phone. Maybe you're going for a walk in the evening, right? You can bring your phone along. Grab it and just hit a web SDR like I do. Grab like something nearby and listen. You'll be surprised what you hear. On that clip, by the way, let me get the countries in. Australia, U.S., Liechtenstein, Serbia, Belarus, Poland, Canada, La Italy, Latvia, Finland, Ireland, Lithuania, Russia, Ukraine, Czech Republic, Spain, Indonesia, uh, China, excuse me, Indonesia, and uh, Ireland. Is this Ireland? Yeah, Ireland. There was 15. And also Great Britain, excuse me, 15. Wow, 15 countries all on 20 meters. A band that, you know, was said it was fair. It was fantastic. That's where everyone was. All the DX was on 20. So if you really want to work DX, if you're someone that loves to collect countries, or likes to fill up your logbook with new entries, 20 is where you need to be at night. 
because it'll work. It's not going to work you forever. It'll work you till just maybe past midnight. You'll see, literally, it's, it's amazing. Literally, just a little after midnight, you start to see the signal start to fade away. And that's what happens. But you get about two to three hours of really great DX. Go on 20 tonight. It'll blow your mind at how well your ham radio works. It will. It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. I have one more, one more little thing that I hope you like. If you've ever used N1MM software, right? The contesting logging software. Well, what about maybe seeing the guy who developed the software working the IARU contest? We got a video of it. Take a look at this. This is the guy who started N1MM software. Thank you. Good luck, November 1, Mike Mike. Kilo 3, Zulu, Japan, is that right? 598 also. Good luck, QRZ. Alpha Echo 4, Mexico, 5908. Thank you. Good luck, November 1, Mike Mike. The Whiskey 9 Kilo Victor Radio, 5908. Thank you much, QRZ. Uh, the Bravo Echo again. A uh, couple of times, a couple of times. Okay, Kilo 9 Delta Bravo Echo, 5908. For those that don't Thank know, that is a Gaysu FDDX 5000 that he's working on here. Uh, getting a lot of splatter again, again. Okay, November 4, Alpha Tango Tango 5908. Thank you, good luck. November 1, Mike Mike. Kilo Bravo 0, United Sierra Alpha, is that right? There you go. November 1, Mike Mike working the radio at the IARU Championships. That's hard to say, by the way, IARU. At least it is for me. I don't know about you. Hey, want to welcome Dave from Temecula, California. I know it's hot down there. Whiskey 6, Charlie, Radio Tango. Dave, thanks for being here. As well as Scott. Scott, one of my dearest friends. Scott is from the other side of the tracks near the hill by the white picket fence. Unless the neighbor's dog's out at the yellow house, then you turn left on 2nd Street. He's from North Boston, New York. Scott, I got you there. Kilo Charlie 2, Charlie Alpha Delta. Welcome to the show, brother. <laughs> If you've been if you've been a part of the show for a while, you know Scott always comes up with from the west side of the tracks by the old picket fence. It's Scott in North Boston, New York. Scott, it's an honor and privilege to have you today. All right, that's it. We're done for today. A little bit about AARU and the championships that we just finished over the weekend, plus some really cool history from the American Radio Relay League. And I again want to thank Michelle from the ARL for doing that. Doggone it, Michelle. You really made my day. Thanks for sending those photos. You're a very, very special person. Thanks for the ARL for all the historical photos from their collection. And thank you to all of you who watched the show. Before we go, because you're the stars of the show, you always have been. Since the first show, it's always been about all of you helping people get into ham radio and honoring you. Jason Snyder. Wisconsin is in the house. Hello, Jason. Good to see you, buddy. Happy Monday. Grab me a concrete shake today, would you? Chocolate. I'd like that. That'd be great from Culver's. Jeff, November 4, Papa Oscar Delta. I got a 5-9 rolling in East Tennessee, and I'll take it. How you doing, Jeff? It's good to see you. You guys have a wonderful day. I want to thank you for watching Ham Radio Live. I don't monetize the channel. I do this to help people get into ham radio. I have a passion for that. Some people have passions for doing other stuff. That's mine because I want our hobby to survive and thrive. That's the big point of being here. You can help by subscribing, okay? If you'd like to help the channel continue, well, there's a way to do that. And I would be honored if you would. Whatever you could give, 5, 10, 15, whatever. 
it would really help us. If you'd like to support the channel, please donate via PayPal at cqhamradiolive at gmail.com. It doesn't take a ton of money to do so, but it does help. For example, the production software that I run, $250 a year. I've got a mic exciter that's out. That's $200 to replace. Those kind of things are hard to do on Social Security income, especially with a little puppy behind me here that always kind of needs her dad's help. You see, she's still sleeping there. So thanks for doing that, if you can help us out. All right. My name's Larry. My call sign is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Thank you to the four continents that came to watch today's show live. Until tomorrow. And we're going to try and be here at 20 UTC. We're going to try and move the show earlier for people in Europe. See you then. God bless you from Oregon. Goodbye, everybody. CBS Night Watch will not be seen tonight due to station technical maintenance. We hope that you will join us when KOIN TV 6 resumes normal broadcast operations at 6 a.m.